There's just so many ways to, to turn it into profit. It's not very expensive to get started. So it's very, the barrier to entry is not very high. And as long as you have something that you're really interested in and is a good niche, it's a very effective way to build a business on the side without it consuming your whole life. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan. Today's episode, I get to interview Jill Burke with MagCast. She's going to tell us how you can create a magazine with very little effort, turn it into a business and a profit center, and how, if you're a business owner, adding a magazine will help you build brand and authority. Today's episode is sponsored by morewithangela.com. Check out morewithangela.com where we are bringing passive double-digit income opportunities from the wealthy to you. Morewithangela.com today. Book a call with me and let me help you on your financial journey. Keep more, make more, live more. Visit morewithangela.com today. Hi, Jill. Welcome to Empower Her Money podcast. Hi, Angela. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, me too. I love giving information to entrepreneurs on different ways that they can, you know, build brands and make money. But before we get into that part, let's first start with you. Tell us more about you and your journey and kind of how you got to what you're doing today. Sure. So I had for 20 years, uh, a mobile massage practice. I had before COVID, I had 15 staff and I really, I really loved, like, I really do love teaching and helping and, and sort of like you, like empowering people. I love working with women who have, we do, we hired a lot of newer Canadians. So we loved, we loved kind of that nurturing relationship. And then COVID just brought everything to a crashing halt and also gave, I loved COVID so much. I'm one of the people that loved it. (laughs) It gave me lots of space to think about what was working in my life, what I loved about my life, and that certainly there's lots of things to love, but also what things were maybe not serving me anymore. My kids had left home, so I was in a different spot. And so through that, through that journey and thinking about what I wanted, I dipped my toes into more than one option. But just before Christmas, I called my girlfriend and I'm like, you know what we really need to do is we need to launch a magazine because that's how you control your message. You can, you can afford to message the way you want. You control who sees it. You control what the message is. And so I started kind of looking at good options for magazine publishing. And I found this company and I called them and I looked at it and I was really in really, really intrigued. <laughs> and then I, the more I thought about it, I called them back and I said, I think you should hire me <laughs> as your outreach director. And they said, okay. <laughs> so that's how I ended up where I am at this moment. So I'm getting ready to press publish on my first issue of my first magazine, which is about living in Europe, which we were just talking about. And, and I'm spending lots of time talking to mostly women about how owning a magazine, well, any owning your own business, really, it's, it's a form of control that you never get if you work for someone else, Mm -hmm. no matter how great your boss is and how much you love your job, having a business is control and it's security in a way that nothing else is. So I've been spending lots of time talking about that and it's, it's really fun. Yeah. So when I think about, you know, as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, as a magazine, if someone comes to you and says, why do I need a magazine? What would you say to them? I don't know that everybody needs a magazine, but the things that a magazine brings you that nothing else does is entrance into, you're always an equal. 
So if you're passionate about your local yoga scene, you don't need to know a ton about it, but you need, it gives you entry and it gives you authority in, in the space that you're pra- that you're writing about, that you're publishing about. And it gives you the business of publishing a magazine gives you kind of unlimited profit potential. There's just so many ways to, to turn it into profit. It's not very expensive to get started. So it's very, the barrier to entry is not very high. And as long as you have something that you're really interested in and is a good niche, it's a very effective way to build a business on the side without it consuming your whole life. Even though it feels like a giant thing, we make it super easy. So, yeah. so I, I think that's, I think that's a reason. I think every woman should have a business. And I think this is an excellent business for 90% of women. Yeah. And you can use this in addition to your existing to help, like you said, build that branding and authority, or you can turn this into your business. The magazine itself could be your business. So for some people that might not have done a magazine before, what are some ways that they can earn profit from having their own magazine? Sure. So, I mean, the, the obvious things are Ascension market. So selling the cover is a really big one. We have lots of publishers on our platform that sell their cover for $10,000 an issue. So it's, it's a great way to profile somebody in, in the subject that you're talking about. So that's a good way. I, I use it to help sell courses that other people are teaching. So if you're teaching a course on real estate financing, I might have a link in my magazine that would give somebody access to that and then I have it's it's an affiliate commission so I would take my commission you'd get people in your course I get the commission for lining it up that's a really powerful way we have a lot of publishers and we have you know calligraphy publishers parents of children with dyslexia we have just a huge range of topics And there are a lot of workshops kind of in every niche that you can think of. So that's a great way. And then obviously marketing partners where you're selling advertising or placements and, and things like that. And then subscriptions as people pay a yearly subscription or they'll buy one episode at one episode, one issue, but subscriptions are also current recurring guaranteed revenue. And that's helpful. Yeah. And in most industries, you have some type of referral partner, somebody that you're referring business or they're referring to you. So it's a great way for you to help promote them within your magazine, but obviously you're going to charge them a fee too. So that's a good way to, to create profit and the affiliate that that's a great idea too. I didn't really think about the affiliate piece, especially for people who already have a program in place and they want to get in front of, you know, it's like other people's stages, right? A magazine is just another stage for you to get in front of another audience that you're not reaching um, quite yet. Now, when I think about the idea of putting together a magazine as you're an author and I'm an author, it can seem seem kind of overwhelming. Like I don't have hours and hours and hours to put into a magazine, but I think that's a misperception. So tell us why. Sure. So I think that there are lots of ways to do it. One of the real powerful draws for using Magcast as a platform is at the very beginning when you're when you're first become a member, there are five two-hour sessions and some one-on-ones. So in that, in the one-on-ones, the the man Damien who runs those is very good at targeting your thoughts and making sure that where you're headed is where you want to go. And he seems to know everything about, I talked to him today and he had this thing, I'm going to call it map, map quest. He just knows about all these weird ass things and he pulls them in. He's like, this is who you should, this is what you should look at next. And all these strange things, but they go through this process where they, they first of all teach you how to outreach to people who are, 
who already have content who would benefit from being a strategic alignment with you. So if I was right, doing a magazine on real estate investing and you were running a program on real estate investing and helping people to figure that out, and I knew you already had blogs on that subject that were super good, I could reach you and I could say, Angela, I've got this magazine. We're a really good fit. Would you mind if I use some of your content and put some great pictures in and linked to your you know, to your podcast. And so most people would say, that sounds great. It doesn't cost me anything up front. It builds your authority and it puts content in my magazine. So we really do teach our publishers how to put the magazine together with the least amount of elbow grease, Mm. right? We want it to be sustainable and long-term and not exhausting and overwhelming. Yeah. Now, do you find that a lot of your people that publish magazines, are they doing mostly digital magazines or is there still, you know, a demand for print? So our platform is just digital. So our, the way we work is completely digital. Now we have had publishers who have print things that go with that. We had a publisher actually from Florida who had, who put out calendars and coffee table books and all sorts of things that went along with his magazine hand in hand. He actually sold that company for a lot of money. And, um, but magazines themselves are available on iOS. So on your MacBook or your iPad through the Google Play Store and also through our app, but they're not print. Yeah. Yeah. And I have been, I've written quite a few articles and like you were talking about, I've had people reach out to me and say, Hey, like your content would love to put an article about, you know, financial education or whatever it is that they felt like I had a a good um, grasp on. But um, for that aspect on the print side, I know you said you guys don't do it, but one of the things I noticed with them is they'll put me in for free, but then they give you an option later to either buy digital or the print copies so that I can promote it too. So They may not be making money on the article. I'm helping them to fill the magazine, but there is still a profit center for them that I could buy those digital copies later so that I can distribute it to my own audience as well. Yeah. And we can, we do do that. We can do that. We often would gift that. Like I would say to you, Angela, I'll give you a hundred, you know, a hundred codes so that you can, because then I'm getting more readers. Like that's just a, a win for me. Right. And then we do, we would provide things like uh, a tear sheet that you could print off and frame behind you. So mm-hmm. even though it's just digital, having a, you know, if you're on the cover of a magazine, you, you want the cover of the magazine, you want it in a frame where people can walk into your house. And go, oh my God, Angela, you are on the cover of this magazine. Good for you. So we do provide like those, that copy so you can have it printed and yeah. Yeah. So it's just another way for you to continue your branding as the person, you know, giving to the magazine, but also for the person that owns the magazine is another profit center for them too. Yeah. 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 There's, there's almost as many profit centers as you can think of really. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You talked about Europe a little bit earlier. Um, I've done traveling, but I haven't done a lot of business in other countries. Do you find that Europe or other countries are also, you know, people who like to read magazines as well. Yeah. And the way the magazine for us intersects is, is actually my husband's in the wine business. So we go quite frequently and we drink wine and he imports it back. And, and so there's a, there's a lot of really natural kind of touch points there. And yeah, any, anywhere where people you contact each other and keep in touch magazines are just they're the best thing for a flight they're you know they're really just without they're they're international they're totally international yeah and that's good for the audience to know you know my coaches um people that work in businesses that can be international they sell courses or books you know those are all your clients are all over the world so knowing that your magazine could potentially reach more people because internationally people do read magazines as well. That's a good thing for business owners to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. 
anything that we haven't touched on that you think we should know about the magazine or producing your own magazine? I, I just think that if, if anybody is at least a little bit curious to know how this might work for them, that we're going to put a link to a calendar link. I'm happy to, to talk it through with them or one of the principals of the company, even if they just are super exploratory about it. I think that it would be really, plus it's just always so interesting to talk to women who are doing something that are interested in business and where they're at and what their, what their push behind changing their life and controlling their money is. That's just an interesting conversation. I think every time. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, you know, hundreds of pages every single week. It doesn't, you know, you could do monthly, you can do quarterly, you can do twice a year. You I'm know, going to do it, quarterly. Yeah. 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 Unless you're doing a news magazine, which we sort of don't recommend doing a, a monthly or a bi-monthly magazine is just, especially online because it, it's evergreen. It's up there and it lasts until the next time you have an issue that's ready to go. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you guys have a community, like a Facebook community or anything for any of your, your members so that, you know, if one is writing a magazine, maybe it's similar topic or they can work together or write an article for each other's magazine? We don't actually have a Facebook community. We're looking at starting um, a group on Wednesdays where people could log in and it would be more of a, of a, like a live interaction. Wednesdays. Yeah, exactly. But we don't have a Facebook group. There are Facebook groups. I looked at it the other day. There's actually quite a few of them for publishers, but just for our MagCast publishers, the thing is you get It'd a link something. and every time you put a, a request in for somebody to call you back, doesn't matter how silly the thing is, you book a time and somebody will be on the other end of the call so that you get all the one-on-one -on -one time you need for any of that kind of help. But a Facebook group is an interesting idea. Yeah, but I like your live calls too, because if you have different people who are producing their own magazine and they're hopping on the calls, they say, hey, I'm looking for someone to write an article about this, or who do you know that might sponsor for this? So it could be some future collaboration for your right? clients as well. Yes, I think that's a fantastic idea. I awesome. will let them know. Yeah. All right, Jill, I have a fun question for you. Sure. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, totally selfish except for my husband would love this too I would love to have that Sabrina thing where you could wrinkle wriggle your nose and your house would be clean <laughs> that would be like that would be my superpower I would just yeah and yeah. That, the results are obvious because I I just don't enjoy cleaning and some people do but a clean house is a happy house Mm, I would agree with that. I've done over 200 episodes. It's the first time I've heard that, but I would agree with you. I would like that superpower too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it very much. Yes. So if our audience wants to get in touch with you, Jill, learn more about the magazine and how you can help them, what's the best way for them to reach you? So if they go to magcast.net, there's a Calendly link there. That's all that's on that page, I think. They can just book some time there or they can email me at J Burke. So it's first letter J B U R K at magcast.co. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time and information today. Thank you so much for the interview. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning into empower her money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast, and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.